Hello everybody and welcome to what is going to be basically a two for one review here. I've got two pens that are more or less the same model, uh, both from Waterman here. There were some slight differences and we'll go over those as we go along here. So these are the Phileas and the Couture. Uh, a lot of times you just see them called the Phileas Couture as though they were one pen. I think they were technically separated but that separation may now be lost to the mists of time. But I seem to remember when I bought them that this was the cool tour, or the clear one, and the ones that had patterns on them were the Phileas. But I might have that backward. I don't know if they were ever even supposedly sold in the U.S. Um, I think both of mine came on just a, a blister pack, you know, sort of sealed onto a piece of cardboard that would hang on a rack uh, with all French uh, wording on it as I recall so who knows exactly you know, how long ago that was even um, you still see them around a bit today but like I said I don't think they're in production anymore all right so I'm just going to call this one the cool tour call this one the Phileas to keep them straight uh, depending on uh, that will be our reality for the next however long this takes um, as you can see, they're pretty much exactly the same size and basically the same shape. They have a lot of things in, in similar there, the, the black caps at the top, um, each of which has this sort of spring-loaded clip that goes into the top of the pen there, and that's spring-loaded into the, into the cap. It doesn't move much, uh, but it moves very easily, and so that works very well on a pocket or uh, a pouch or whatever. Now these nibs, we'll just work our way up here. These nibs, they're smaller than a number six nib. Uh, they've got some schoolwork on there trying to show you here, but yeah. Um, they're smaller than a number six. I think they're bigger than a number five, although I don't really have one uh, to, sh to, to check against at the moment. But either way, they're proprietary. Now, this is going to be kind of hard to see here. I'm going to try and show you best I can. Ooh, there we go. So you might notice right there, you can see sort of underneath the ink that the nib, this is the nib, and then there's a little chunk that comes down. There's a little hook on the end of the nib that hooks into the feed. So you can't use just a standard number five or number six or whatever, or whatever. But, and then they're not flat on the back. They have a little bit of extra of extra stuff on the back to hook into the feed to stay securely on the feed. Now speaking of feeds, this one, as you can see, this is perfectly clear. You can see all the feed in there and some ink. Now this feed is friction thick. You can pull this out and clean. And even though as far as I can tell, this is basically the same nib, it's basically the same feed, this one appears to be glued into place. I have not been able to remove this. You know, obviously I don't want to try and just damage the thing. But, you know, uh, certainly I know how much force I need to get this one out. And that's not nearly enough to get this thing out. So I'm guessing this one's epoxied in underneath the, you know, the opaque section there. Um, which is kind of strange because I don't think, you know, I've had a couple other Watermans. None of them were epoxied in, but this one seems to be. So I've never been able to get this nib and feed out of there, but I assume it's all the same on the back. Um, they're both cartridge converters, as you can see. Um, I know some people claim that Watermen have uh, proprietary stuff, but I've never had any troubles using Standard International. Both of these are Standard International. Um, this one's a Standard International Long, and this one's a Standard International short as you can see right there um, there's you know there's definitely a space for a second one in there but I just haven't bothered to put one in the back there now as far as the barrels go the barrels in the cap there is actually the big difference now it feels like this is going to be impossible to see on the video and I'm sorry but this feels like a thicker plastic um, it's certainly clear. It feels more sturdy and just thicker. I don't really have a calipers to measure, you know, the sort of inner dimension of that, of this barrel, even if I were to unscrew it. 
you know, I don't really have a way to measure how thick that is, but it's definitely solid and robust and all of that. Whatever adjective you like, you usually got a metal ring there that's purely decorative, I think, at the bottom there. All right, same kind of deal here. However, this material feels a lot thinner. You know, I can't quite, you know, smush it by squeezing, at least not really very much, but it feels like I should be able to, and I'm just sort of doing it wrong. It doesn't feel like the plastic itself is sturdy. It just feels like I'm just I'm sort of missing the trick. And I don't know how well you can see that. That's probably pretty in view. And this pattern really is only skin deep. Right, you're sort of seeing the backside of it through the um, through the, the milky plastic of the body, but that is really only only on the outside. You can tell much more clearly in person that you know that pattern is only on the outside surface and not on the actual body itself. And in fact, you can see. Where is it right there? I will try to get this on that. You can see that line right there. Where everything just sort of stops. You know, that's sort of the obvious little bit right there where you have all that stuff just dies. And that goes on that line goes all the way through, and that's sort of where the edge of the sticker is, or whatever the sort of moral equivalent of a sticker is that we've got going on. Now this edge is smooth, so I guess they have you know put a coat of a kind of some sort of lacquer type thing on there but you can feel right here you can feel that edge of that sticker right there so this end wasn't smoothed off but they did smooth off the sort of overlappy part right right there where that uh, sticker stops and there's a similar one on the cap somewhere i don't think they hit it underneath the clip but maybe they did I have found it previously, but I'm not seeing it right this instant. But you get a similar sort of thing on the clip. So this is just a sticker over some plastic. It doesn't feel like the same plastic that is used right here. It feels like a much flimsier plastic. Reassemble everything. Now both of these nibs are fine nibs. Uh, that's what they had when I got them, so that's what I ended up with. Um, they are somewhat uh, scratchy, is always a bit sort of judgmental. Um, you know, I don't particularly, I'm, I'm more of a fond of the mediums and the broads. Um, you know, they are a bit, a bit feedbacky. Um, this one is better than the other one. This one is a little bit worse, I think. You know, whether that's just natural variation or the difference in between the two, I don't really know. But let's try and give this a rhyming sample here. So this is a Waterman. That's what we're calling this one the Couture. And it's a fine nib. And this is Private Reserve Plum. And the long cartridges that are kind of hard to find. This is actually the last one in my box. So I'm going to have to go back on to Amazon or whoever and find a supplier because none of my sort of normal suppliers seems to carry it. So, But I like the color and I like having long cartridges. So I'm going to try and see if I can't dig up some more of these things. Here we go. You probably can't hear it because I got the mic on my shirt and not like over the pen or anything. But there is quite a bit of feedback on this thing. It's not really scratchy. At least this one isn't. But you can definitely feel that it's a fine nib. And in terms of line variation, well, you can just basically forget that. So this is no pressure. This is all the pressure. And you can tell that that's basically the same. Uh, reverse writing is actually almost better than normal. I mean, it's a bit finer, 
but you know it's, it's pretty smooth. Sometimes I'm, I'm wondering if maybe they polished the wrong side of that maybe. Anyway, um, coloring in not so bad. Once the ink gets flowing, this is one pen that can be uh, sort of temperamental. If you you know if I leave it in the office for a four day weekend or something, the ink's gonna be unhappy when I get back. So it really wants some regular use. You know, it doesn't like sitting around. It dries up fairly quickly. But once you're, if it's, when it's writing, I haven't had any trouble with the flow. If we try to write something fast here. And you can see that's pretty much all there. So no troubles with the flow. It's just, is a fine point nib and, you know, if you're not accustomed to the fine point nib, it can be a little weird sometimes, but, all right, so that's in that one. Now we have this one. This is the one I'm just going to call the Phileas on the assumption that there's a difference. Again, this is a fine point nib and I currently have Diamine Ancient Copper in there. I have gotten this, you know, I got this to sort of re replace. Uh, I haven't been using Private Reserve Orange Crush. One thing I noticed, I don't know whether it's this pen or whether it's the ink or some combination of the two. You can see there's almost no tipping on that thing. Um, you know, if a lot of red-ish type inks, and the Orange Crush was certainly no exception, will tend to ooze out of whenever you got them in. You know, there would just be, I would open it up and there would just be a ball of orange goo right there and right there. And whatever pen I put it in, pretty much. But this, um, whether it's the pen or the ink, I don't know, but this ancient copper has been really well behaved in that regard. I get a little bit around the edge right there, but not very much. And it's easy to wipe away. And for the most part, you know, it's been very well contained in the pen, so... Again, I don't know how much of that is the pen, how much of that is the ink, but I have not had the sort of ooze fest that I have gotten with other orange type inks, red type inks in the past. Well, they don't even have to be that saturated because I've had the same with, say, Waterman Red, which is, you know, I don't think people would consider that a highly saturated ink, but I've had that tend to ooze out of pens as well. All right, all right, with this one, this pen feels scratchy. I mean, as a negative thing, um, you know, I've often, I don't seem to have gotten any yet here, but it's not that uncommon for me to pick up paper fibers as I write, especially on this, this cheaper type paper. Um, I don't seem to have done so here, but that's, you know, it definitely sounds like and feels like you're going to pick some up at any moment. Again, no line variation. And you can get a little bit of shading, it looks like, but so that's no pressure. All the pressure, maybe a little bit there, and then no pressure again. And I don't know, some of that might just be that I'm bleeding through because there's so much more ink being laid down. I don't know. The reverse rhyming, a lot finer, a lot drier on this pen. I just about ran out there, so... There's that. And this pen just doesn't seem to color as well as the other one does. I mean, you've, I've got a lot more sort of white spaces that I have to go back in and fill more than with the other pen. So, fast writing. No skips or anything like that, so that's all fine. All in all, they're not bad pens. I'm trying to remember how much I actually ended up paying for these. I seem to recall these going for about 40 to $50. And I would say that this one is okay at that price. This clear one, you know, I would, you know, if something happened to this and I had the opportunity to replace it for 40 or $50, I probably would. This one, I think a little bit harder about this pattern one. And I don't know how much of that is sort of natural variation with tolerances and so on and how much of that is them actually being different materials. It's hard to say, because I just have the two. But nevertheless, 
No. This has been a fairly reliable writer. This one has been reliable enough, but again, it does tend to pick up paper fibers and things like that, so it's uh, not as pleasant to use. I don't reach for it as often uh, as I might. So, in any event, that's our review here: the Waterman Filius and Couture, or vice versa. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.